Well, hello there, Maverick Traders. This is Rob Reinold. It is nice to be with you, and I cannot believe this week is almost over. So we have one trading day left for the week. Let's take a look at what happened today. Today was a real just nice and solid up day. If you remember yesterday, the NASDAQ got absolutely crushed, about 1.5%. It was the worst day for a couple months. However, yesterday, small caps were up like 2.5%, 3%. It was a crazy move in small caps. So we have this kind of push and pull with the NASDAQ versus small caps. Take a look at what happened today. The Qs were up a percent. So another strong day in the NASDAQ. Take a look at small caps. They were actually down most of the day. They did crawl their way back. At one point, small caps were down about 1.5%, while the NASDAQ was up about 1.5%. So we're, we're just seeing this rotation back and forth. We do know that there are still buyers in NASDAQ 100 stocks. They're still there. However, the market is definitely broadening out as far as its rally goes. So let's talk about a little bit of news here. Now, this isn't really news, but this is what is going to be on the headlines. This is what you're going to read about or hear about. It's, it's official. The S&P has exited its bear market. Now, what does that mean? It literally just means after a bear market occurred, where it goes down 20%, it goes back up 20%. Okay, that's all that happened. Nothing has really changed. There's no different economic reports or economic outlook out there. It's just simply a number. So the fact is we are well off the bottom. And this market is now more back in, again, just a normal market, not a bear market. Now, look, we've known that for a while. We've been calling the market being up for the last couple of months. But look, we just have to recognize there's been a big bounce off the bottom. We are trading kind of closer to the highs than to the lows at this point of where we've been over the last two years. We do see this rate hike next week as really starting to come into focus. We've been all the way up to around 50% of a rate hike, all the way down to like 10% of a rate hike. This week, we've come back up to about 25%. Now, this means that next week there's likely going to be some volatility because if this thing gets closer to 50%, remember the market doesn't like uncertainty. Uncertainty is going to lead to volatility. And if this number gets a little bit higher, I think we're going to see you know, a little bit of turbulence, maybe a little bit of selling going into that Fed meeting. If this number stays below 25%, we probably have a pretty smooth sailing going forward. Let's take a look at these charts and you can see this is just nothing but a nice, strong high base. That's all it is. We're high basing up here. Yes, we've taken four days to go sideways. It's just building energy. We spend a lot of energy on these days, a lot of energy. We just have to have some rest here. So nothing has changed in the charts. If we come over here to the queues, the queues had a little bit of a deeper pullback again yesterday that day, but the buyers were back. We still think the other markets look a little bit more attractive than the Qs. That being said, when the Qs get a bid, they're going to run. But we like the other parts of the market a little bit better here because we do think the Qs are susceptible to these big down days. We'll take a look at the S&P. It had a little bit of a down day yesterday, but it was very easy and comfortable to sit through. This move isn't all that comfortable to sit through. It's a big pullback and it can put some pressure on people in positions. So we think you want to be in other places bullish while the market widens out here. We take a look at the heat map. You can see that today was a day that the queues were in command. Look at Apple, look at Amazon, look at Tesla, look at Nvidia. Look, it's very clear where the runs were. Overall, this was about a 50 50. Half the stocks went up today, half the stocks went down today. This was really a day about the large cap tech stocks pulling the rest of the market up with it. So nothing has really changed. We've been at a plus three now for the last two weeks. We're at a plus three still. The market looks like it is high basing and getting ready for another expansion. We may be in this base for another couple of days. Who knows when it's going to break out? But the next move is most likely going to be higher. And again, we've been calling this bull market really ever since uh, March here as it moved above this 50 period moving average and held it every time it retests. So let's take a look at a couple potential trades. 
There's definitely more bulls out there than bears. Bulls are easy to find. Bears are definitely harder to find. And I think the sideways stuff is fairly easy to find as well. Now look, there's a lot of tech names in here. And I'm gonna focus more on this kind of large cap, slow tech. So we got like Oracle and Dell. Oracle and Dell, they're not the sexy names they used to be 20 years ago. These are slugs. These are big companies that chug along. Again, you can play stocks however you want. You could go after a Netflix. It's just Netflix is going to be more volatile. On a day like yesterday when the queues got hammered, it's going to get hammered. You can pick, okay, what do I want to play? Do I want to play the higher risk, higher reward, or do I want to go down the risk curve and play something more boring? And if that's what you want to play, it's going to be this one, Oracle. Take a look at this stock. This stock is simply over the last two weeks, just grinding, grinding higher. We're trading up here at the top of the range. We could get a nice little pop. I like playing this up to the 110 area, but this is the perfect stock for, you got it, my favorite trade, the diagonal call spread. So again, you could write a 109, you could write a 108, you could write a 110. I'm going to do the 109 here, and I'm going to do that for tomorrow. So tomorrow morning, I'm going to open this up, sell that 109, probably for 10, 15 cents. That's just going to reduce the cost on my long call, and then I'll reevaluate it. I'll either do another diagonal next week, or I'll just hold those long calls. Like I said, look at the volatility on this. This hasn't seen a lot of volatility as this market has kind of swung around lately. Let's get out of tech because tech, there's a bunch of stuff that you can buy. And look, if tech pulls back, pretty much everything's going to get hit. Let's take a look at Eli Lilly. Eli Lilly is in pharmaceuticals. We have been basing now for about six weeks. We're starting to get up near the top of that range. This is another time I really love to play that diagonal call spread. So the top of that range is 450. I'll go out and I'll buy probably the July monthlies, probably something like the 430, maybe the 440. Sell this Friday's 450 against it. If we get a big pop tomorrow, I'll go ahead and close the trade out because that'll be a nice trade for a one day gain. If I still like it, maybe I'll look to hold, but this one looks like it wants to break out and head higher as this moving average, this 20 period moving average is now caught up to it and started to push up against it. Lots of bulls out there. Let's check in on sideways. I really like the energy sector here for sideways plays. I think this is the best place to be. This is Exxon Mobil, and you can see, all right, resistance is up here around the 115, 116 area, somewhere in here. We got support down here somewhere in the 100, 102 area. So look, it's just a matter of picking your midpoint. What do you think is going to happen? Now look, I'm not going to do tomorrow's expiration. That's too short. I'm going to take a look out till next week. So the question is, where do I think this is going to be next Friday? Well, I'm slightly bullish the market. Well, actually, I'm quite bullish the market at a plus three. But if I take a look at energy, it's more of a, okay, plus zero, plus one, plus a half, somewhere in there. So I like this 110 target. So I'm just going to play this. A tiny bit bullish here, open up a 105, 110, 115 butterfly. Anywhere in here is going to be a, a profit. Anywhere outside of there, no, it's not going to be a profit. But I really like the energy sector for a sideways play here. On the short side, it was hard to find something, but this is uh, Zim Shipping. This is a shipping company and you can see it has completely ignored the market rally. It doesn't want to go up. Even today it was down today. So look, I don't think this is going to crash here. This market is strong. I don't think anything's going to crash, but this is something that is underperformed. So I want to find a trade that I can live with. Something like a 13, 14 bear call spread. I'm only asking this thing to go down a tiny bit. Just a 13, 14 bear call spread. I'm not looking to be bearish, really bearish on anything here. This market is very strong at a plus three. So let's talk about tomorrow. I've had this up now for the last couple of weeks. We are seeing Friday volatility really come into play here. And I think it's because of these zero day to expiration options that people are playing. What they do is they go out and sell calls, sell puts, basically saying I'm going to sell up one to 2% out of the money 
thinking it's going to be easy money for me to cash in on. What's happening is the market makers are seeing those and the market is pushing these markets to be a bigger than average gain on Fridays to try to put some pressure on these positions. So I've had this up for the last couple of weeks. I think we're going to get another plus or minus 1% move tomorrow. Not because I think there's anything big. There's no economic reports. There's hardly any earnings reports, but it just seems these zero data expiration options, especially on Friday, are causing the market to be pushed around quite a bit. So I think early in the morning, you're going to get a good indication of which direction it's going to be. If it's up, I could see the market running all day long. If it's down, maybe we get a pretty big pullback on Friday. But we're starting to see Fridays turn into bigger volatility days than we've usually seen. Ultimately, it's going to be a one-day move. Everything gets kind of corrected next week. But they can play a little bit of havoc on any options positions you have expiring tomorrow. So like I said, early in the morning, if it's a bullish move, I'm going to close any bearish positions I have that expire tomorrow, and I'm going to hold the bullish ones and vice versa. If I have any expiring bearish trades and it's a down move in the morning, I'm more likely to give those all day long and I'm going to be pretty quick to close anything I have bullish that expires tomorrow. Like I said, I wouldn't do, if you don't have ex any positions that expire tomorrow, don't worry about it. This will all get worked out next week. If we go down, we're going to bounce back up. If we take off, we're probably going to sell off just like we did this week. Well, that is the market roundup. Thank you so much for joining me. Goodbye, everybody. Thank you.